Hey Danny. <coughs> hey. This is my gun and we'll go through some quick uh, adjustments to get yourself sorted out to start off with. Um, obviously you've got your air inlet, you've got your gauge if you've got it if you're running a gauge. I've got my fan, if you can see that, I've got my fan and my fluid control. So what I normally do to start off with is when I've cleaned the gun and I'm prepping it ready for uh, ready for painting, first thing I do is pull the trigger all the way back and I'll wind out my fluid control until the handle, until the trigger no longer moves back. Okay. Once you've come to a dead stop, wind the fluid control in until the trigger starts to move forward a little bit and then I wind it two more turns in. So that's it, and now I'm going to go two more turns. And that will now give you full fluid control. Obviously you've got two stages on the trigger, first stage is for air, after you do that and, and go all the way, then you're going to release the fluid into the trigger, into the into the gun as well. Um, <coughs> my fan, I don't really adjust. I, I normally leave it about halfway until I've finished uh, doing my testing and make my final adjustments for that. Um, open up my air valve all the way, and then I run straight off the gauge, and uh, that determines what I'm going to run and what I'm not going to run as far as uh, uh, the product that I'm painting and um, uh, the obviously the weather conditions and everything else depending so what I'll do is I'll hook this up and then we'll get started okay so so that I know just how much air I'm actually running into it Obviously I've got my gauge, I don't know how good this is going to come out, but we'll have a go. <coughs> if you can see that gauge, I'm going to press that. Now this is running in bar at the moment. So it's running 6.35 bar, straight from the compressor in the line. When I pull the trigger halfway, it's telling me that I'm getting 1.6, 1.6 bar through the gun and that's where you make your adjustments. Now I do have a sheet that I'll uh, I'll try and give you the um, the link so that you can you can uh, print it out and do conversions. Um, that's bar to PSI so you, you can do a conversion on whether you're running PSI or bar but you can do a conversion for both so you know what you're what you're running at. So you can adjust it down and you can adjust it up however you want it to be. We won't be able to tell exactly what we're going to do. I always I always start off around the two bar mark. Well, we'll sit it at one one ninety. One point nine bar, which works out to about thirty two psi thereabouts. Um, if you look at the, uh, I'll spin this around. I'll take this over. When I pull the trigger on the gun, you'll see what the uh, what the full air volume is going through my air trap. when I pull the trigger it's currently sitting at 80 psi and 
that's about how far you would want your gauge to move. Try to do this on camera. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is uh, we've got to put some fluid in the gun and uh, and just run a couple of quick tests to see what it's doing and how to adjust the fan. So hang on for a minute. Okay, back again. I hope you can hear me through the fan. I've just put some, all I've done is put some straight thinners in here. And what we'll do is we'll do a quick test just to see how the fan pattern is working. About a hand span away from the job, and you should get about a hand span of fluid, and it's got to be a consistent line. Two wet spots, dry in the middle. Two wet spots, dry in the middle. Two wet spots, and getting wetter. more consistent. A lot better. Very wet. Not quite as wet in the centre. If I bring my fan all the way in, you're just going to get one wet glob. So you need to have that. It all depends on what your, your gun's capacity is as well. Some guns will spray at 12 inches wide fan, so you've got to adjust accordingly. If you can get a good spray pattern at 12 inches wide, then brilliant, you know. Um, but uh, you know, unfortunately, it's a it's a 50 dollar gun. I got to do with uh, I got to deal with whatever I've got. That is a nice pattern, not too wet on the outside, and consistent in the centre. So that is not bad at all. And I'm probably yeah. it gives me a nice a nice even coat now. Remember this is only thin as once we put the paint on and then I'll start to show you uh, how the paint, how the, the paint should actually look when it starts to uh, hit the body. But approximately eight to ten inches away from the job, and I'm getting a good hand span fan, which is about what you want. And of course, overlap it by fifty percent. What I'll do is I'll let that dry off for a minute and I'll mix some paint in the gun and uh, we'll have a crack and see how we go. Okay, Daniel, I've got some paint in the gun and I've made no adjustments whatsoever to the gun itself, so let's try and see what it does. Nice, even, straight line. That is first coat, okay? Um, that's about what you want on the first coat. Don't expect anything better. If you want less fluid, adjust your fluid control to make the paint go on lighter and not as wet. Overlap, 50%. First coat, so don't expect to get full coverage. If you want to do a lighter coat, wind your fluid control in like that. Wind it in more, less fluid.
obviously that's a lot lighter so you're running less fluid that the board that I'm using is very very tested, it's a rough surface so that is going to come out rough looking anyway. I will find a, um, something that's a lot smoother to give you uh, an indication of just how it should turn out on a smooth surface as if you're doing it on body work. my test panel That has come out pretty smooth. Hang on a second. This is on an unpreparated surface. I don't know how well that comes out. But that base has gone on pretty smooth. And that's the kind of finish that you're looking for. And it's all to do with your gun adjustments. If your mixture is correct and everything else that you've done is correct, then it's all to do with your PSI and your, and your gun adjustments. And the only way that you're going to know exactly how to do it correctly is to play with it. You've, you've got no choice, mate. You've got to play with the gun. You've got to do testing um, so that you can then get an idea on what produces a good finish and what produces a really shit finish. So what I'll do now is I'll make a couple of gun adjustments and we'll try and produce a crap finish. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to drop my air pressure. So I'm going to drop my air pressure down to 1.5. Beautiful. I'm going to open my fan wider. Straight away, I can see on that test panel, I don't know how good this is going to come out. You can now see that that is very lumpy, very orange, it's got a, a lot of orange peel in it, a lot of orange peel effect in that and that's by dropping the air pressure too low and having the fan too wide open. 
So what I'll do is I'll make an adjustment, go back, and then I'll get a close-up view of the other, the other finish. Once again, I don't know how good this is going to turn out. But that finish, it's not perfect. Um, by any means, it is a little bit coarse. So, I, because I'm rushing, I suppose I should have upped the air pressure a little bit more. But that finish is far better than that one. I don't know how good this is going to come out on camera. Um, let me see if I can get another photo. very coarse that's how it should turn out and that is a, a lot smoother but that's it. you're only talking about your base coat now as well which isn't super critical because it's your clear coat that's what's going to make all the difference in the world how your clear coat goes on and how it comes and how much rubbing back and sanding you've got to do, buffing. But you've got to play with those adjustments. As you can see there, that is very rough, but that's from the texture. That's from the texture of the material that I've done that on. I hope that's given you some sort of information. I'll um, I'll look at. I've got to go and uh, I've got to go out shortly, so uh, I'll come back to the buffing side of things for you. Hope this helps, Daniel. Bye. And just to recap, this is the kind of finish that you should be able to get. Well, this is the finish that I'm getting from a cheap pass fifty dollar gun, unbuffed. That is just. I was doing a test so forget about the motley look but the actual finish and the shine is what I'm getting from a cheap ass $50 gun unbuffed now if, you're, if you've got a good gun you should be able to get way better results than this that is nice and smooth and flat and very little in there if I was to cut and buff that it would come up like a million dollars 
forget about all the scratches, it's been hanging around in the garage for a while.